I think that you're trying to understand human psychology. When you perform with someone, you're trying to understand what motivates other people. And I think ultimately, like, I mean, we're all human. <laughs> I, think, I think when you try to understand other people, it, it, there's, there's a human connection to, to why people do what they do. My name is Kate Giordano. I am a sculptor, video maker, and performer. I was born in New Jersey, but I moved to the Pensacola area. Um, I'm actually from a small town outside of Pensacola called Gulf Breeze when I was three. So that's where I was raised. And then nor northern uh, Florida. My early influences were, was cinema. I became an artist because I thought I wanted to be a filmmaker. I mean, I am a filmmaker, but I make different type of movies, and I thought my exposure to film was you know, mainstream TV, um, mainstream movies, and I still love that stuff to a degree, but I think when I first started wanting to make stuff, I was thinking that I would make things that were like that, that were um, commercial, video, commercial movies, and then I, uh, I went to uh, an art school, Massachusetts College of Art, with the intent of studying filmmaking. But I didn't realize that the f kind of filmmaking that you make at an art school is different than maybe the kind of filmmaking you'd be making at a more like fil traditional film school. So when I first arrived, I was, I was like, what is this? <laughs> what is this stuff? And I think um, it was actually a much better fit for me. I would never seen experimental film before and I and I, and also I was in a context of an art school so I was taking you know drawing painting sculpting etc and so through the combo of those two things I I, I realized that I was more of a more of a artist that did multiple things as opposed to just um, you know making a narrative a narrative video when you watch my videos or you come to an installation that I made or you see even sculptures, they definitely still have these qualities of being um, a narrative and they still play off of cinematic language in a lot of ways. And there's usually like a set or a, you know, like there's, there's things that are very, that are very theatrical that, 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 that play a lot off of um, things that we're used to seeing in movies and TV. But I combine them with sculpture and video and I, I play, I perform in the videos you know, I play multiple characters I play of different varying genders <laughs> throughout the course of the project. So I think um, in, my, in my videos, there's um, maybe oftentimes a very traditional narrative that is um, offset by the way in which the narrative plays out and it, by, by the fact that I'm playing multiple characters, by the fact that they're interacting with sculptures, by the fact that, you know, there's, there's unusual elements that subvert the narrative that you might expect based on what you're seeing in the videos. I always have a hard time coming up with like what art necessarily influenced me off the top of my head, but I think for me, my, my biggest influences are, are things in pop culture, things in the news, you know, things that you could find on, on YouTube that are like old interviews or old newscasts or old um, or, or things, things that were in real time. I don't generally have an idea before I start working on something. I usually begin by like making, uh, I usually begin by making, um, making stuff, making things and I'm not really sure what, I'm not really sure what those things will lead to at first. And then as I continue to make them, I generally have ideas for different scenes. And then as it gets bigger, the context, I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm uh, constantly making stuff to fit the context of what I already made. So I'm, I don't work in a way where I have this preconceived idea. Like I don't, I don't have like a, like I'm not, I don't make a map of the, <laughs> of what I'm doing and then execute that in, in the way. I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm making a TV or making a, 
you know, for this show, I'm making a story, I'm making the storyboard, and then I'm making the Bible, and I don't, I don't necessarily know where it's going to go, or I don't really necessarily know how it's going to interact, but I, I feel like I just let myself do that, and then I contextualize it later. Like, I'll, I'll make a sculpture, make a video, make a sculpture, make a small video, and it, it's, a, it's a real back and forth between the objects and the video. I feel like one couldn't exist without the other. The costuming and the way that I go about per portraying people, it's very gestural. And it's, it's, uh, it's, it's like, I put on the hat, I'm wearing a mustache. Like, you, you're, I'm an FBI agent, just roll with it, you know. Uh, acting and costume and things like that is very similar to how I go about sculpture. Um, where I think for me, like, once something is recognizable as, like, say, the FBI agent or the TV or, you know, once it's recognizable as that, like that's when I feel like I that's an, that's that's when I stop, um, and then similarly I think with the acting it's like once I'm once I'm conveying the information like once it's once it's done like once you once you get the idea I, then that's that's enough. <laughs> you know I think the work combines camp, it combines satire. Um, yeah, it's a criticism. It's sometimes an allegory, um, but I also think, for me, um, there's also an element of sincerity with the engagement of the subject matter. I think if you only play a character with the one dimensionality of, you know, like, where I think it, it's unwatchable in a lot of ways, you know, and I think for me, um, I feel like I want to tell these stories with a certain resonance. It's a, it's a mix. I think, you know, it's, it's, it's a criticism, it's a satire, but it's also, you know, I feel like I do play, I do connect with it on a, on a more emotional level at the same time. There is a common thread in my work about the, the in-betweens of relationships and the misunderstandings of people. And I think I take that and I make these self-contained worlds in which um, these misunderstandings are very highlighted, you know, and I think, I think it's, it's also sort of there's a melodrama to all of them. You know, I think all melodramas are, are based on, on the kind of misunderstandings of people. The piece that's in the gallery right now in the main gallery is, is The Final Wife, which is um, you know, loosely based on the Waco siege, the 1993 um, you know, tragedy in which um, there was a cult, a cult leader who in this kind of standoff with the FBI and it ended up in the in this, the whole thing kind of erupting in fire and there was a lot of people that were killed. It's definitely based off of this story, but it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a departure, like a huge departure from the actual thing that happened. So I feel like in my, in this, um, in my iteration of the piece, you know, I play, I perform as David, who is David Koresh. I play the FBI agent, and then Juliana Schley plays Janet Reno. And I feel like in this work, I'm taking David and Janet as these sort of opposite ends of different extremisms, whereas like David is um, completely deluded in his mind about who he is and his ability to exert that kind of control over his followers and and he's living in this self-contained world that he's made. And in my, in my work, and again, like my work is a work of fiction as opposed to like, I mean, it's taking something that was real and fictionalizing it. So I don't, you know, I want to make a distinction between, between that. But, you know, in, in my, it, you know, it, it's somebody that create, you know, is creating, building, you know, this world around himself of him, his own, ideas of him being like this Christ-like figure of his ideas of him being in touch with God and his ideas of, of, of exerting control over people via um, religion in this really extreme and, 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 um, and specific way. And then on the other end of the spectrum, there's the Janet Reno character that Juliana Schley play, plays um, that is very convinced of structure and order that the government brings. In my installation, the Janet character is very convinced of the righteousness of her 
ideology, which is also constructed around her, you know, is, is the idea that whatever is happening, whatever, 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 whatever we're doing is justice, you know, and whatever, whatever the, the Department of Justice is doing is, you know, like, is, is the thing that is the right thing to do. And she's, she's very convinced of her righteousness and her, and her uh, ability to administer that in this, in this also really extreme way. And so, and then the other character in the piece is the FBI agent, which I play, and he's sort of the middleman. You know, he's the, he's the negotiator. He's the guy that's trying to get David to, le to leave. Like, he's, he's, he's the sort of in between, between the two extreme ideologies. He's the person that has to translate the one to the other and translate the other to the, so he's the, he's the conduit to, to getting to the whole thing. So he, he's the bridge between, you know, that, <laughs> that character and that character. For me, it was important for me to play the FBI agent and the David character because it's like I'm trying to convince myself almost to come out. And, and I think, you know, what we're talking about, about these self-contained worlds, it's like this is a self-contained world in the gallery, and then each of the characters are in a self-contained world of their own making, of their own delusions, of their own um, complete uh, faith that they are right. They're so convinced of their own ideologies and they're fervently on the opposite ends of, of, the, of the spectrum. And so I think that's, in this piece, like that's where the tension arises between what we're talking about, but like the missed relationships in this project, the, the David and the Jenna character meet in these dream sequences. And so the, to me, you know, they, they're, they're, the tension in their relationship is sort of resolved in these fantasies. And there's a dance scene and they actually, there's like a romantic element between those two people where like they're intrigued by each other. Like they're intrigued by their, um, they're intrigued by their oppositeness. I've been drawn to like ideas of cults. And I think in, in a lot of, my work, there's this element of control and, and, and I feel like everything being so self-contained in my work and I feel like there's this ideas of things being really, um, you know, there's usually someone that's wielding power over someone else or like someone that's wielding influence over, over someone else and I think that's what attracted me to the subject, the subject matter what interests me about it or what heart and also what horrifies me about it is how that amount of control can can spread and manifest i guess for me it's just like how could this have happened it's unfathomable it's an unfathomable thing like how this from from both you know from both elements of the extreme like how could this have how could this have occurred how could this person have so much influence like on these on these people on these people for me it's like taking these elemental things from that about coercion, about control, about, about the, the horror of that and like how those things can manifest in society, whether it's, a, whether it's like a small religious cult or in, the, in, in systems of government and um, kind of breaking down the relationships within that I'm using it kind of as an allegory, but I think it's also very relevant to like forms of extremism that we see today. I mean, this wasn't, you know, I think it's, I think the, the link between then and now is not too far um, in terms of, you know, various um, extremist elements in our current dialogue, so.